We've already discussed diabetes, and now we're going to move on to hypertension. As you remember from previous lectures, this is a picture of the back of the eye, and this is the optic disc. Coming off the optic disc, we have the branch retinal arteries. In addition, there are branch retinal veins. When we discuss hypertension, we're mainly going to be discussing how hypertension affects these arteries and veins. This is a picture of a normal retinal arteriole. Chronically, hypertension increases the diameter of these retinal arterioles and leads to a process called arteriolar sclerosis. Basically, over time, the arterioles harden and the lumen of the arteriole decreases. As the lumen of the arteriole decreases, this also means that the radius of the arteriole decreases. As the lumen of the arteriole decreases, the resistance increases. As you remember, the resistance is proportional to 1 over r to the fourth. So basically, as the lumen decreases, resistance increases and this prevents blood flow to areas of the retina. On phonoscopic exam, as the arterioles harden, on phonoscopic exam you'll see a characteristic silver reflection. Let's go back to discussing the retinal arteries and veins. As drawn here, the retinal arteries and veins run together. They're actually in a shared adventitial sheath. This adventitial sheath is shown in black here. The blue represents the retinal vein, and the red represents the retinal arteriole. As you can see, they're both in this shared adventitial sheath. As the artery hardens, it gets larger. This leads to compression of the retinal vein within the adventitial sheath. On phonoscopic exam, we see this as characteristic AV nicking. It's worth noting that after a while, the artery can compress the vein so much that we get an occlusion of the vein. This is called branch retinal vein occlusion. Now that we've discussed the chronic effects of high blood pressure, let's discuss the acute effects of blood pressure. In the emergency department, it's common to see patients with blood pressures of 180 over 110. Due to blood pressures that are this high, the retinal arteries actually contract, thus leading to less blood flow through the artery. Due to blood pressures that are this high, the retinal arteries actually contract, thus leading to less blood flow through the artery. When patients present with very high blood pressures higher than 180, let's say higher than 200 over 120, there can actually be what's called fibrinoid necrosis of the retinal artery. This can lead to macular edema and disc edema as seen in papilledema. It's important that when we're treating these patients, we don't decrease their blood pressure too quickly. De Decreasing blood pressure too quickly in these patients can lead to optic nerve infarction. Furthermore, treating patients with antihypertensions can lead to optic nerve ischemia as well. If this is a graph of a patient's blood pressure through a day, 
and the graph starts at them waking. It's been shown that a nadir in blood pressure occurs at night. If you're treating your patients with antihypertensives and you tell them to take these at night, you can actually decrease the blood pressure further. This can lead to optic nerve ischemia and vision loss.